Good morning guys, I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome to my local woodland. So, come here today, and as you can see, I've got my uh, 4x5 here, set up on the tripod. And this video follows on from last week's video, which was uh, the whole build, how I built the camera. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll leave the link at the top there for you. Highly recommend you go and checking that out. Um, so yeah, I'm back at uh, my local woodland, and this is uh, a composition that I shot in autumn. And it's probably one of my favourite images from 2020. Um, I'll put it up on the screen for you. Um, it's uh, a sweet chestnut, and it's surrounded by these vertical pines. And the sweet chestnut's very gnarly and twisting, and yeah, it's got real character to it. And it stands out amongst all of the other trees, so it's a really good subject. Now we're in uh, the depths of winter. I was hoping actually it was going to be very, very foggy this morning. The forecast was very, very foggy conditions, but it is foggy, but it's not as foggy as uh, I, I would hoped it would be. Uh, but I don't think that really matters. It's not really about capturing an amazing photograph today. I really want to test out the camera to see if it works, to see if I've got any light leaks, check my focusing and all of those things. But I do have a few challenges i have got everything set up so i'm waiting to get a few items which has made it a bit more difficult actually um i still haven't finished my dark cloth uh, so i've been using my jacket which is not ideal um a couple of other bits i don't have a spot meter yet i'm uh, waiting to pick one of those up um also i don't have a loop so i've been using this old vintage 50 mil lens just to uh Get a bit of magnification actually it works quite well surprisingly um, and it's doing the job for now um, so there's a few things i need to get really to make it more efficient also need to get a level i've ordered one of those just to help setting everything up um, which yeah will help going forward as well but lots of things i need to sort out but that's all part of the fun isn't it so i am going to get some film loaded in here and take an exposure and like i said probably use the four sheets i've got get back to the studio, develop the film and scan it into the computer and take a look and see what we've got. So guys, you might, if you watch the channel, you might know back in the autumn time I was down this avenue of trees, shooting some of the trees a bit further up actually, but I just wanted to touch on something. See the state of this tree, all of these carvings that have been carved into the trunk of this tree over the last however many years. Some of them are right at the top there, so a long time and it's very, very saddening. And it's not just this one. There's carvings on every single one of these trees down this avenue and I just do not understand it. There's also a lot of litter scattered around but that litter, you know, that can be picked up. This cannot be repaired and uh, yeah, just found it really saddening, you know, it's something that's been bugging me for a while and I just wanted to share it with you because it's that sheep mentality, isn't it? It's that, you know, one person does something and then somebody else sees it and thinks it's fine to do that so I'm going to do the same thing and, and look at the state of this. It's just absolutely shocking, it really is. Um, if I ever see anybody doing this, I'll be having serious words to them. Now, I don't want to have any negativity on this channel. I really don't. I want it to be a positive place. There's too much negativity in the world already, but this is just something that's really bugging me, and I just wanted to share that with you. Um, yeah, just don't understand it. Truly, truly saddening. Anyway, let's get back to the studio and uh, get this film developed. <laughs> Thank you. 
so film is washed so it's all down to this really isn't it it's a bit of a moment quite uh, quite nervous not really sure what to expect just hoping that there's uh, an image on the back of the negative I can definitely see something so that's positive yes I can definitely see an image fantastic that is awesome just a case of getting these dry and then we'll have a proper look at them we scan them in oh I'm so pleased I really am whether they're in focus or not I don't know but there's definitely an image on the negatives and that is a step in the right direction So the negatives have uh, dried overnight. So let's quickly take a look at them on the light table. As you can see here, I've got the four negatives uh, spread out on the table here. And uh, yeah, much to my surprise, and this is literally the first time I've seen these negatives, sharing this with you as much as I possibly can the experience. And yeah, uh, quite, quite surprised to be honest that they've all come out and none of them have got light leaks, which is, uh, yeah, absolutely incredible to be honest because there's so many different variables with this i haven't tried the lens before obviously i haven't tried the camera before hadn't all of the uh film holders are all used so i haven't tried them before so to get four out of four is uh, uh quite remarkable to be honest uh, and i'm very very surprised and um, they all look like um, they're in focus as well here on the light table just remember um, these are negative so um, at the top here the darkest one is a little bit overexposed that's f8 at a second one down in the bottom left hand corner is f11 at one second and then as the light changed i quickened my shutter speed up to half a second and then um, exposed these at f18 and f22 so as you can see these are a little bit underexposed but i just wanted to try to get a feel of the different exposures different aperture settings um, these are probably some of the aperture settings that i would use um, when i was shooting on my aps-c camera and i wanted to just get a feel for uh, the difference in the depth of field um, because depth of field is a lot different with large format so when I got back I took a portrait of my son as well and my daughter fortunately looking at the uh, my daughter's negatives they she looks like she moved um, but my son managed to stay still during his exposure and his looks pretty good actually now, I've scanned them in with my Fuji camera which is not ideal um, but you know I don't have a flatbed scanner yet uh, certainly not worth sending these off to be scanned these are just test shots so using my camera is ideal for this and obviously getting them developed quickly here in the studio as well is ideal I can get some quick feedback about how these images are what they look like all of these uh, four images that I've taken well actually there's five because there's one of my son as well I've run a quick edit on so I've inverted the negative using the curves I've added a little bit of contrast and just messed around with the whites and blacks a little bit just to uh, just to bring out the uh, the detail in the shot. Nothing much really. Um, it's been pretty straightforward in terms of edit. I just wanted to get them looking as they uh, as they should look. So uh, actually, I really like the Ilford Delta 100. I think it looks really nice. So quickly, uh, let's take a quick look at these uh, negatives. Now, one thing I noticed straight away is um, how incredibly shallow the depth of field is especially like at f8 so obviously if you're shooting on an APS-C camera f8 would be you know pretty much uh, at 50 mil you get quite a decent depth of field um, but here on a large format camera f8 is incredibly shallow depth of field so um, I've got a lot to learn in terms of um, how I approach my compositions and what f-stops I use but this is all part of the process isn't it so it's what's so enjoyable to be honest so here at f8 I've got an incredibly shallow depth of field but I did manage to uh, get my focus on the tree which I was uh, trying to do and I was struggling to be honest because uh, I couldn't really see the ground glass very well my down jacket which I was using as a dark cloth lets in so much light so uh, I'm in the process of making a dark cloth so but anyway I managed to get the focus where I wanted it um, my composition is pretty naff I didn't really have the right focal length um, the conditions were very poor I couldn't point up into the sky anymore because it was too bright so ignore the composition it, that's not really relevant um, and the conditions well 
that, they're not really relevant either. And in lots of ways, it was quite nice that the conditions weren't great because there was no pressure to get a decent image here today. And it meant I could just play around and uh, yeah, just take the pressure off and just, you know, trying to work out, you know, about using the camera really. And, that, and that's what I did. So this was F8, half a second. This one was F11, so again, managed to get my focus fine, and we've got a bit more depth of field here. We can see I've managed to get the focus on these trees in the back there as well, which is quite nice. But if we come down to the foreground, you can see this is very, very soft down here. So, um, but yeah, to be expected. Um, then we went to half a second, because obviously throughout the sunrise, the conditions were brightening up, so, I wanted to quicken my should speed up a little bit just to compensate for that and drop my aperture, close my aperture up to f18 for this shot. Um, and as you can see again, I've got a little bit more depth of field. I managed to get some, <laughs> well, these are not in focus, but um, a bit more depth of field on that one there. And a little bit more sharpness in the foreground. It's still blurred though a little bit. And this was f22. Now you can see, this is um, a bit underexposed um, because stopped the aperture down again without changing the shutter speed um, and that's resulted in a little bit of muddiness in the tones in this image so if we go to the first one you can see how much brighter and how much more contrasty the leaves are compared to this one which is a lot more muddy and that's because it was underexposed and then i've boosted that exposure up in uh, lightroom to compensate for that and it results in a bit of a muddy uh, effect it's not so much contrast so um, that's quite interesting in itself um, but overall I quite like the look of the image actually um, and obviously we've got a lot more depth of field these are still soft these bits here and uh, it's a bit soft in the foreground so you know for an image like this I'm probably gonna have to go uh, a lot smaller with my aperture just to try to get a bit more depth of field if required but not always in the woodland do we need to get everything sharp so um, that's you know interesting in itself as well one thing I probably would say is I didn't have my camera set up perfectly uh, I didn't have a level with me I've now got a level and I'm also working on calibrating the whole of my uh, camera it's currently in pieces on my dad's workshop in my dad's workshop shall I say I've made a focusing knob on the back there, which is helping me to get my fine tune, fine tune my focus. Um, that's done, and we're working on some calibration um, devices to make sure I can get everything square really quickly when I'm setting all the rails and the rods up. So um, for this, I did it by eye, and what we're probably seeing is that I've got a bit of tilt on my uh, front standard, which is probably making the top and the, maybe even the bottom part of the image soft. So if uh, if we look here, this is uh, my focus is quite good here, but as we come up, it, it gets softer and softer. So I think we can see that on these these trees here, um, it gets softer as they come up to the top. So I've probably got some tilt on the front uh, standard there that uh, I didn't need to have, but without having um, a level, I was just doing it by eye. So, um, but that wasn't really relevant for today's uh, for today's excursion. This is all part of the ongoing process of. You know really building the camera so for the sake of this video I have done a little edit on this image which I'll share with you at the end but first of all I thought I'd share with you the shot of my son which surprisingly came out really well and um, this was just taken in the studio with the light I'm using to light myself now the problem with this light is continuous light which is great for video but for taking a portrait at f8 I've only got I've got a one second exposure so Trying to get a, a model to stay perfectly still for one second is incredibly difficult. And also at F8, the depth of field for a portrait of this uh, cl this close to the camera is about probably half an inch. So he did incredibly well. And, that, and I said to him, don't smile, keep yourself as still as possible. Look moody, just look at the camera and don't move. And uh, that's why he's not smiling because obviously it's a lot more easy to keep still if you just keep your mouth shut. And, just hold your hold your stance so he did really well and actually uh, the focus is uh, pretty pretty good on his uh, on his eyelashes there so that came out really well I was quite surprised actually that he managed to stay still for that length of time so 
that was really cool. It was really nice just to see what I could do here uh, with the shallow depth of field. <laughs> just a bit of fun really and uh, quite pleased it came out. So for the sake of the video, I did a quick edit on this image here. Uh, cropped in a little bit because uh, my focal length was not great and uh, just put a little bit of a vignette on it, a bit of sharpening and just a bit of dodging and burning around the back of the tree just to make the emphasis more on the tree. And that is the finished shot. Certainly won't be posting it anywhere. <laughs> um, but you know, I just thought I'd run a quick edit on it and uh, throw it up there just for a bit of fun. And to be honest, it's not really about the image today at all. It was more about, you know, can I get an exposure? Can I take an exposure on the camera? And uh, yeah, completely surprised to be honest that we didn't get any light leaks. So now it's just a case of running series of tests calibrating everything making sure i can get everything set up really quickly and uh, efficiently and a few of the bits i'm working on and then i think i'm ready to order some transparency film and uh, get cracking with a proper landscape photography trip once this lockdown has ended so guys that is it for today's video hope you enjoyed it hope you got something from it if you're interested um, in how i develop my film um, my black and white film just let me know maybe i could do a video about that or in lockdown something perhaps could do um, next week's video is going to be another project that i've not really mentioned but i'm just halfway through it and i'm hoping that could be a really cracking video for next week. So stay tuned for that. If you are interested in joining the club, seeing some behind the scenes action and uh, taking part in monthly galleries and all of my extra online content, please be sure to check out the Photographer's Clubhouse. The link is over here down in the description as well. Please uh, like and subscribe if you like this content and I will see you next week. Take care.